okay people so christmas thieves <laughs> now <laughs> this is uh one of your christmas movies obviously i think you can tell from the title and i'm gonna try and keep this very pc um and short because there's a lot that could be said but i think when you take a step back and uh yeah we we can look at it in different ways okay so it is a new film directed by francesco sinquimani uh it is written by uh, mario bellina uh fernando del omo andrea fazzini and andrea Iro Ira Volino, who um, also kind of came up with the story. So um, we then have got Ricard, Ricardo Di Pasquella as the producer. Um, Andrea Ivanino is an executive producer. So is Andrea Zaz Zuzo. Uh, the music is from Vittorio Cianelli. Cinematography is Patrizio Patrizzi. It's edited by Granzinio Falazone. Uh, yeah. And our cast, we have got Michael Madsen. Um, his wife, Emma, is played by Katie McGovern. They have two children. Liam, played by Lorenzo McGovern Zaney. And Olivia, who's played by Mia McGovern Zaney. So, uh, you know, I, I guess that helps with chemistry, having your kids in it. Um, we then have got our two felons, Frank, played by Tom Arnold, and Peter, played by Douglas Dean. Um, Sharon is played by Esmeralda Sepida. Uh, Officer Murphy is Mark Thompson Ashworth. Yeah, that's it. And the gist of the story. Okay, so it follows Frank and Vince. After a robbery goes wrong, they break into a home to avoid the cops when eight-year-old Liam and four-year-old Olivia mistake them for their babysitters. Hoping to make the children fall asleep so they can make their final getaway, Frank begins to read them stories from a magic book that he grabbed during the robbery, taking them to Enchanted World, taking them to the Enchanted World of Arctic Friends. The two thieves have to endure the children's hijinks as they make various attempts as absurd as they are disastrous to escape hmm well there's not really any hijinks <laughs> and there's not really any attempts to escape oh dear oh dear it is uh it's an interesting one this it's an interesting one now i did not like it one bit but Right? Taking that step back, I think we can look at Christmas Thieves and say, I think this would work well for a young child. Right? Now, uh, it depends on the innocence of your child 
to how old you could probably get with uh, showing, right? Because, I mean, there's going to be some eight-year-olds that will just be like, nah. But then there's some that will be like, yeah, no, I'm down. I'm down with this, right? Um, but I, I, I would probably say your best bet is, hmm, maybe five. Maybe five, six might be the, the maximum age of viewing this film. I think a young kids, anything up to that, fine. It, it's no way offensive. It's not scary. So, yeah, any real young kids, I think they'll enjoy it. Now, the best part of the film is the stories. Now, it's not the reading of the stories because, whew, but it, it's the actual, it's the animation used to tell the stories because it's like this mini film within a film, right? And that, yo, that animation, that's really nice, right? If we just took that, right, and just made this cartoon about Arctic friends, whew, that would have been golden. Right, that really would have been golden. Now you would have had to have better people narrate those stories, but yeah, I think that would work extremely well. And because of that, right, I, I think yeah, little kids they will they will love it because you see these fun little characters and their adventures and everything like that. And to be honest, the majority of the film is basically that. It's basically the, this story within a story with just some other stuff around the edges. So for a little kid, I think this will work. Adults, I think ad most adults will probably hate this. <laughs> they will probably hate this so much. Now, it's, look, the film, it's 77 minutes, right? An hour and 17. So, you know, throwing your kid to a bone and letting them sit through this, you can probably, you know, pass the time looking at your phone. But it, if you have to engage, right, which is a nice thing, right, engage with your kids, there's been, there, 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 look, it's terrible, but it, it's not offensive. So, you know, you'll sit there and you'll be like, okay, hey, kids, look at the story. Oh, isn't that nice? Right? You're, you're, you'll get by. You'll get by. And it's not too long for you to bear. <laughs> now, the weird thing is, on a, you know, on an adult point of view, there's good actors in the film. But the delivery of some of these lines, especially when they're reading the stories, right? Because you've got the two kids that, I mean, to be fair, they're not very good actors, right? We've seen great kid actors. These aren't great. Now, it could very well be the direction, you know what I mean? Kids, they do need a lot of direction. So it could definitely be that. Or maybe mummy wanted to be in a film, make a little cake. They were forced into it. Who knows? Who knows? But the delivery of these stories is so wooden. It is a little painful, right? It is a little painful. And these scenarios, scenarios don't work. Don't work, right? Now, it seems that they're living in a very small community where everyone kind of knows each other. I mean, we see the mum, who's a police officer, leave her house, and straight away she's, you know, by the magician's house. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, there's not big distances here, which then would make you think. Everyone would know everyone, right? The police would know the babysitting company. So when they go to their police officer's house, they would understand what the situation is. If you can't tell a dude dressed up as a woman, you shouldn't be a police officer. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? So there's these weird things that are going on that you're like, oh dear. I mean, and basically, from the giddy up, you know how this film is going to end. 
you know how it's going to end, which is just a bit like, oh, okay, all right. You know what I mean? It's not a good message. It's not a good message for kids. You know what I mean? From that respect. And they cooked a Christmas dinner so fast and made a cake, right? Made a cake, cooked a Christmas dinner in no time. Usually, right, you got to put that turkey in first thing in the morning. When I say first thing in the morning, I'm like... You know, in mean, five, six, right? Five, six a.m. for that huge ass bird to cook all the way through. This, I mean, like 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes and this meal is done, which was a little crazy. You're like, damn, okay. <laughs> and uh, values, values shift so fast. So far, so you're like, hmm, <laughs> oh, oh, is that what we're doing here? But yeah, as I said, look, so many plot holes as for an adult to, uh, you know, just basically you could fit your whole body through one of these holes. But little kids, I don't think they will see them. I don't think they will notice them. The cliches, the lazy writing, the lazy plots, they won't see it. And they probably won't notice the real wooden delivery a lot of times here. So I think a kid is unoffensive and it would work, right? But that's it. Remember, people, you got to be understanding of the innocence of your child. If your child knows everything, if your child doesn't believe in Father Christ, like, then you can't, your kid ain't enjoying this ain't enjoying this. And think to yourself, did your kid like stuff like Paddington, Peter Rabbit? If it hated those, it won't like this, right? If it loved those, it might like this, you know? So try and gauge it like that, okay? So um, Christmas Thieves. <sighs> yeah, the people that made this may have stolen our time, but <laughs> it might be a nice delivery for our little kid. All right.